morning and God bless you. I bring you greetings from Destiny Christian Center where we are illuminating the pathway to purpose through the teaching of God's word. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. In what? In this day, this moment, this season, and this hour. We have so much to be grateful for and we can find reasons to rejoice. And I'm just grateful that I have this opportunity to be able to come before you via social media and give you the word of the Lord concerning prayer. We are not coming out for corporate prayer. Nevertheless, I have a short 15 minute exhortation that I want to give to you so that you will purpose to continue to pray, to pray, to pray and not faint. We are encouraged to pray without ceasing. We are encouraged that we should always pray and not faint. We are encouraged by the word of the Lord not to grow weary in well-doing for in due season. The Bible says that we will reap if we don't faint. The Bible also says that the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous avail much. So we know that our prayers make a difference. So I'm going to start out just briefly talking to you and sharing with you what the word of the Lord says. And I'm going to read to you from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And we are going to actually start from verse 14. And the word of the Lord says this. Now we urge you or exhort you, brethren, warn those who are unruly, comfort the faint-hearted, uphold the weak, be patient with all. See that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good both for yourselves and for all. Now, I like this part. I need you to pay attention. Zoom in, tune in. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So here we have Paul giving these various exhortations, and I wanted to give these various exhortations to you as it, as it pertains to us praying and believing God to move on our behalf during this time and season that we are currently in. And I love how the Bible says, now we exhort you, brethren. So we're talking to the body of Christ. We're talking to born again believers, those who have accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. And it is an exhortation, a word of edification and a word of comfort so that you would be stirred to continue to pray during this season. And it ends with that, but leading up to it, it's telling you to rejoice always. To, in other words, find reasons to rejoice. Yes, we have some restrictions that are placed upon us in this time and in this season. And I know things can get a little precocious and you may be a little edgy. I may be a little bit edgy. You, Nevertheless, we want to purpose even in that to reel ourselves back in and to know that we have so much to be grateful for. We had a situation a couple days ago where I had to drop Dr. Poole off somewhere and um, without getting into all the details, I literally had to drop him off and I had to use the restroom. They wouldn't let me in to use the restroom. And so I had to drive another 10 minutes and I could have stopped at a restaurant. No, I couldn't stop at a restaurant because those were probably closed and who knows the state of the affairs in that restroom. But anyway, so I had to drive to the church, which, which was about maybe 10 or 12 minutes away. So I just rejoiced because there was someone there at the church. I was able to go there and um, it made me change my focus. And so though I was inconvenienced at the moment. I was still grateful that I still had that option and I was able to go to our church and sit for a few moments and not have to go all the way back home, which, which was just a little bit further, a little bit more inconvenience, but I needed the closer part because I had to use uh, the restroom. But nevertheless, I was able to go there and sit and take care of some things and not have to feel like I was in an uncomfortable place. So I was able to rejoice in that. And then when Dr. Poole was done, I was able to go and pick him up. So we want to rejoice always. Then it goes, verse 17, it says the word of pray without ceasing. I know that sometimes we have difficulty wrapping our head around the concept of praying without ceasing, but it's, it's, it's really quite simple. It's either, it either pertains to us just praying in the Holy Ghost continually, silently to ourselves, continually keeping our hearts, thoughts, and minds upon the Lord when we are doing things, when we're in uncomfortable places, just taking a moment to pray, taking a moment to say, Lord, Things are really strange right now. It feels, it, the, the, the air feels weird. But yet you 
are not caught off guard by this situation. This has not escaped your notice. We understand the sovereignty of God and that everything is either permitted or planned by you. So I give it to you. I turn my heart to you. You said the steadfast man, mind you would keep in perfect peace. So I keep my heart and mind fixed on you. That's praying without ceasing. So just saying something on the way, along the way, so that you're keeping your heart, your attention and your mind and your focus on the Lord. So we're to pray without ceasing during this time. And not only that, in everything, give thanks. So in finding reasons to rejoice, there's always something that we can be thankful and grateful for. Um, Dr. Poole and I, Joshua and Shekinah, we've had an opportunity to just spend time together, have dinner together. I mean, we do that, but it's kind of on the go because we're all doing our different things. But we've been able to have some time to spend with one another. And so it's been good. And I'm thankful for that. I've been able to reach out to friends and as a matter of fact, I need to make sure I reach out to a friend. Her birthday was yesterday and she's celebrating her 60th birthday. So I need to reach out to her and there's other things that can be done. And so, so much to be grateful for. I was able to speak with my sister who lives in Atlanta. I was able to talk with my mom. I talked with my dad. I'm healthy. I'm strong. Destiny Christian Center is the best church ever. There's so much to be thankful for. And, and speaking of you, Destiny Christian Center, our beloved church that God has given us to shepherd, to be the under shepherd. We were so tremendously blessed by our, really our first full-fledged live stream service. And let me tell you, you all came out, you showed up and we were so blessed. So my heart was so full of gratitude that Destiny Christian Center, that you all were out there, that you all were listening, that you all were commenting. So there's so much to be thankful for. So let's not lose sight of that because when we do, we start getting upset. We're frustrated, disillusioned, hard to get along with, and we really lose sight of what's important. So I'm just so grateful. The Bible tells us in everything to give thanks. So, so much to be thankful and grateful for. And then it goes on to say, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And so this is a tremendous opportunity for each one of us to really just to readjust our focus. I did an acronym years ago on focus. F meaning and standing for fix your eyes on Jesus. O to overcome the obstacles. C commune with God in prayer. And you understand the obstacles, understand the seasons, I'm sorry, and then S to stand. And so I've been really thinking on that acronym that the Lord gave us all those years ago. And I've been purposing to fix my own personal eyes on Jesus so that he can give me the ability, give you the ability, give us the ability to overcome these obstacles that are coming our way, these things that we're faced with everywhere we turn. We turn on the TV, we, we get the pop-ups on our phones, on our smart devices, on Facebook, on IG. We're getting these things that are telling us and saying things to us in regards to the situation at hand. And so, but nevertheless, we don't wanna fix our eyes on those things. We want to fix our eyes on the Lord. And I love it because the, the Greek word for looking unto is aphoreo, which means turning away from everything or anything that would distract you. And so these are some distracting things that are coming against us. But we have to turn and fix our eyes upon Jesus, keeping our eyes on him. And I realize that that can be challenging because we seem to be bombarded with the media, with the news, with conversations. But I'm telling you, if we would just fix our eyes upon Jesus. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. He's been there. He started it. He's going to finish it. And this too shall pass. It's going to all work out for our good. And when we do that, we're encouraged and uplifted. So why think on anything other than him? Amen. And so Oh, to overcome the obstacles. If we're so focused on the Lord, he'll give us words of encouragement. He'll give people to reach out to us, to help us to overcome. We are more than conquerors. The Bible says we overcome by the blood of the lamb, the word of our testimony, loving not our lives, even unto death. So we overcome. We're overcomers, but we only can overcome if we have something to come over. And so during this situation and time, we are overcomers. We will come over it as we purpose to fix our eyes upon the Lord. And, and in overcoming, that, that gives us the connotation and understanding that something is hard against us, a mountain we're faced with. And so we commune with God in prayer. About back in October, God began to minister to me and encourage me 
um, in my prayer life to pray about everything. So I've been purposing since then, if it comes through my mind, if it comes across my heart to pray a quick prayer, a short prayer, I'm thinking about that person, God bless them, God strengthen them. If I know the details of the situation, I'm asking God, I'm, I'm calling upon heaven, bringing God into the situation, get, bringing my awareness to the power of God over the situation, commune with him. He wants us to ask, seek and not ask, um, when we're coming to God in prayer, we're to ask and keep asking, we're to seek and keep seeking, and we're to knock and keep knocking, not because of the difficulties, but because of, because of God wants us to talk to him about it all, amen? And when we're talking to him, he'll begin to talk back to us and give us an understanding. I bet that's what we're all really wanting during this time. What's going on? Why is this going on? But you know what? He'll give us an understanding, and until he gives us the understanding, we can have peace Knowing, even though we don't know, God knows. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 2, I believe verse 6, it says that the Lord gives wisdom and from his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. Paul told Timothy, consider what I say for the Lord will give you understanding in everything. So as we commune, he'll give us understanding. And when we have the understanding, we'll understand that it's warfare. And warfare is good because we win. And the final part of focus is to stand. And all that we do, we are to stand. In Ephesians chapter 6, I believe starting at verse 10, it's talking about spiritual warfare. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. It goes on to say, having, having done all to stand, to stand. And when we're doing standing, we're speaking the word only, not also, because the Bible says in Mark 11, chapter 23 or chapter 22, have faith in God. Jesus told his disciples to have faith in God for whosoever would say to the mountain, be removed and cast into the sea and not doubt in his heart, but believe the things he would say will be done. He'll have whatever he says. So let's focus during this time. Fix our eyes on Jesus. He'll help us to overcome the obstacles. Commune with God. Tell him your feelings. Tell him your, your consternations. Talk to him about it. He'll help you to understand so that you can stand and speak the word only. I'm telling you, I am so grateful. I am encouraged because I've had this opportunity to sit and encourage you with the word of the Lord, with the word of the Lord. This Bible, this is our tool. This is our tool of triumph. And as we put it into play, the Bible says, taking up the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So that's what we have to do during this time, my beloved brothers and sisters in Christ, our daughters, our members, our friends, our family um, of, of Destiny Christian Center. This is what we have to do. And God will give us the grace to do it. So if you're a little weary, that's okay. Don't grow weary. Just keep doing what you're doing. God's going to work it out. Don't try to figure out what he's already worked out. And I'm here to tell you, as other men and women of God have been saying, this too shall pass. So be encouraged. Now we are going to be tuning in live on tomorrow for Sunday service and be stay tuned for the instructions for that. We're going to do the same thing. And I know that Dr. Poole has a word for us, but in the meantime, during this hour of prayer, you pray, you believe God, have your list, be encouraged, seek the Lord, talk to the Lord, bring your requests before him, pray for anything, say every, all of it, cover it in prayer. And when you're done, leave it there. Trust him to work it out. And so I tell you, I'm encouraged. I trust that you are as well. Thank you for sitting with me and listening to me these past few moments of your lives. And um, I'm so encouraged and I have a great expectation that God is going to perfect that which concerns us. And he's going to bring in a great harvest through this season and through this time. So listen. As I close, I want you to know that I love you, Dr. Poole, and I love you with the love of the Lord. And we're so grateful for this time and for this season and for this opportunity to be able to minister to you this way. We don't take it lightly. No, it's not our preferred way, but we do have a way. So with that, we can rejoice. And so, hey, that's what we're going to do. We're going to rejoice. So you all have a wonderful day in the Lord. Be encouraged. Fix your eyes on Jesus. He'll help you overcome the obstacles to commune with him, to have an understanding, and to stand. Fix your eyes on him. Fix your eyes on the word. 1 Thessalonians 5, verses 14 through 18. 
Be encouraged, be blessed, rejoice, be thankful, encourage, be cheerful, prayerful, and grateful. And we all will have a testimony on the other side of this. So we love you, we appreciate you, and you have a tremendous day in the Lord. Bye-bye.